the Gulf of Mexico, terminus of America's mightiest river, incomparable cradle of life, drawing millions of migrating birds and the nation's greatest nursery of fish. Yet after decades of neglect, the Gulf has come to symbolize loss. Twice, it has recently served as bullseye for the costliest hurricane and the largest oil spill in U.S. history. Its longer history describes a more insidious decay. Its wetlands vanishing by the minute. Its waters seasonally rendered dead for lack of oxygen. The insults to the Gulf come from all quarters. Dredges and channels have diverted the mighty Mississippi from the wetlands it once nourished. A gauntlet of industries and cities lining the river's banks have discharged their pollutants, destroying the marsh's seafood nurseries, expanding the dead zone to record size. But just as there are many to blame for the demise of America's greatest coastal wetland, so too there are many rescues now underway to reverse it. One in particular comes from an unlikely team of people in an unlikely place. My name is Dennis Friest. I'm at Radcliffe, Iowa, Central Iowa. We have a family farm operation. We have about 1,450 acres of row crops, and we farrow to finish about 4,500 pigs a year, and we also finish an additional 5,000 feeder pigs a year. Iowa farmers are blessed with some of the most productive soils in the world, producing 23 million acres of corn and soybeans. Almost every acre is put to use, producing food and energy. Some people say, well, what does Iowa have to do with the Gulf of Mexico or the ocean anyway? And we say, well, about 200 million gallons every minute. The Mississippi River has a drainage from 31 states. What happens in Iowa, what happens in uh, Nebraska, in Idaho, in West Virginia, that happens to the ocean. There's an enormous impact. Once covered by tall grass prairie and roamed by millions of bison, the Midwest has become a landscape of industrial agriculture. With this monoculture have also come great quantities of excess nutrients in the form of nitrogen and phosphorus now leaching from Midwestern soils into the Mississippi River and ultimately into the Gulf of Mexico. Here, these wayward fertilizers feed immense blooms of algae whose decaying masses deplete the ocean water of oxygen, every year creating a dead zone the size of Massachusetts, suffocating nearly everything in its path. So we have things that happen right here in Iowa that end up affecting folks thousands of miles away, fishermen trying to fish in the Gulf of Mexico. As we start to figure out how to do a better job, we can lessen that amount of phosphorus that leaves our farms and lessen that amount of nitrogen that leaves our farms. It's something that we can do and been starting to improve, and I think we have some more that we can get done on that. To witness firsthand what it was they were hoping to save, a group of Iowa farmers, led by Secretary of Agriculture Bill Northey, boarded a southbound bus 
and followed their Mississippi River downstream to its meeting with the Gulf of Mexico. I've been doing this for 20 years. I don't think I've had Iowa farmers on a boat. I've had just about everybody else from rock stars to country music singers to Oklahoma tourists, but no Iowa farmers. Taking the bait, but not taking the hooks. I guess I didn't realize uh, the value of it as far as the, the fishing industry and that sort of thing, how important it is. Good day. I'm basically a fish out of water down here, aren't I? Interesting experience. If someone had asked me a year or so ago if I would be working with the Commission of Agriculture for the state of Iowa and taking him out uh, on, a, uh, on a boat this past weekend, I, I would have said, no, I, there's no way that's going to be happening. But it is, and that's a good thing. Okay. Are you holding back here? Yes, sir, right here behind Wow, they here. are sandy field. Got them? Rough field to them? Yeah, yeah. It shows that people throughout this country uh, understand that we need to work together to solve problems that extend well beyond the boundaries of our state. Uh, the resources that we manage, our fish, our shrimp, they don't know where state lines are. The governors of the five states bordering the Gulf of Mexico came to realize that each of their economic futures hinged on the health of the same system. Their agreement to preserve that system became the Gulf of Mexico Alliance. Basically, try to move from a uh, system of state-by-state -state governance of, our, of the Gulf of Mexico to one on a more regional basis. And we've extended that partnership up into the watershed of the Mississippi River. We're talking about not just doing things differently when you get on your tractor or in your pickup truck in Iowa. We're talking about thinking about things differently. One of the farmers' experiments is aiming to lighten their heavy reliance on fertilizer. The entrepreneurial Dennis Friest was one of the first farmers to take the leap, reducing his fertilizer dose substantially. And we weren't losing any yield. So it was really an eye-opener to say that we are being told by our retailers and industry that we need so much nitrogen to produce a bushel of corn. We're finding out that that was on the high side and that extra pounds we were putting out were actually going to waste and we're going ending up in the Gulf of Mexico in the hypoxia zone. Number one, it's about the environment, but number two, it's also about economics. We're not leaching that nutrient away. We use less to get more and we use less, which makes the bottom line for us a lot better. It leaves dollars in our pockets. Iowa's commitment to reduce their total farmland runoff by 45 percent will take additional efforts beyond using less fertilizer. Much of Iowa's rain-fed cropland is engineered to drain water as fast as possible. Water invariably laden with nitrogen and phosphorus and headed for trouble in the Gulf. Those out to stop the flood of farmland runoff into the Mississippi are now building a series of enormous organic filters, otherwise known as wetlands. And these wetlands are placed um, below a farming watershed, and that water then sits in these wetlands for a short period of time. Those wetlands reduce the amount of nitrogen in that water. As that water leaves, it has 40 to 70 percent less nitrogen than it did as it came in. All of these sites are on private lands. It's been very popular in Iowa, and we actually have a two-year waiting list of landowners waiting to proceed with restorations of wetlands on their lands. This area here, when it's flooded with water, will be, what, 27? to 37 acres, yeah. something like that. It's got the pay. Father and son dairy farmers, Doug and Herman DeWall, are part of a growing cadre of Iowa farmers turned wetland ambassadors. It's gonna take cooperation from a, from a number of people as well as 
as state and federal help to get this off the ground because uh, uh, we, we've got to start someplace to get this going. It just, uh, we just can't go to work and start dumping water and have no uh, uh, responsibility or care about other people. We have to, everybody's here, we, and, we need to all work on this project. And there is some places where they may not be able to put one of these in, but maybe we can do a better job here and keep it back more so that the average will be down to where we need to be. To achieve a 45% reduction in nitrate will require all of the nitrate reduction practices that we currently have available implemented fully across these landscapes to the extent that they're practical, plus about 2,000 to 3,000 of these nitrogen removal wetlands. It turns out the farmer's workhorse wetlands are serving far higher purposes than mere water filters. Oh, there they are. That's a pair of trumpeter swans. They came into the area about three years ago, the first pair. They've raised several offspring uh, over the last three years. And the story was out that they might have been the first pair that nested outside of captivity in Boone County. And they've come back three years in a row. So I'm pretty proud of them. I've always thought that we got to do everything we can do to try to keep everything rolling and, and, and working, even if it's down in New Orleans. If it's our fault, we want to we wanna fix it. Lifelong Iowan Jim McHugh jumped at the opportunity to establish a wetland on his farm with a sense of stewardship reaching far beyond his property line. I think I'm doing my part to help clean up the Mississippi, and it's only a little part, but it's at least it's a part. Fewer tons of fertilizer, more acres of wetlands. All are lightening Iowa's agricultural burden on the Gulf of Mexico without burdening the returns of Iowa's farmers. If you're interested in keeping your farm where the farm's supposed to be and not washing away, this is an excellent program. I highly recommend it. If you like wildlife, if you're thinking about conservation, give it a thought, really give it a thought. He's a fighter. Got one, huh? Got a fish on him coming here. He's a big one, I think. Oh, yeah, that's a good size red. How big is he? We need a healthy marine environment, and we need resilient coastlines. Increasing water quality, decreasing nutrient introduction, um, increasing and, and restoring and improving habitat function, um, all of those things build toward a, a healthy marine environment. And they don't need to, to come at the cost of economic development. If we can carry out the plans that we have put in place now, we will achieve those goals and 20, 25 years from now we'll be able to look back and say, boy, we really did a good thing.